a 10 foot ladder, and 197 steps. That's how far away I am from the single shared toilet in the entire marina every single morning. There's always somebody in there. But not here, because here I can do it in five. Five. You know what else I like about this place? Is that it's got a pool. When we went to the boat show and hung out at that YouTube tent, one of the sponsors was Total Boat. They heard a bunch of us were in Panama and said they'd send us a whole bunch of stuff. But you know, people say a lot of things. Most of the time, nothing comes of it, but something came of this. The reason why I'm at this fine establishment where I have a pool, and also a private bathroom, is because Total Boat actually came through. They sent us a four foot by four foot by four foot tall pallet full of goodies, which I get to go pick up this morning in Panama City. This is our little baby that we're gonna be stuffing full with 1,100 pounds of paint, epoxy, and primer. The question is, are we gonna go seats down or seats up? I'm gonna be stuffing every corner and crevice with product. I'm gonna put my stuff under the seats so it doesn't take up any precious room. We've got 68 cubic feet 1,100 pounds. I had the three guys from Parlay and me jumping in the trunk to see if the suspension could handle it, and it did pretty good. I aired up the tires last night when I was getting gas so the tires don't bottom out. The strategy is gonna be break down every single box, remove every single product, and stack it all in here like Tetris. Felipe, I'm over there, so I just need to break down the pallet. I don't think you're gonna fit, fit this in there. Robert, you were a uh, night uh, voter, so. Did he just call me naive? This is Felipe, our import stuff into Panama guy. Challenge accepted. All right, we're gonna break that sucker down, get it inside that tiny little picanto, somehow, some way, baby. You have to take care of. So the breakdown to ship 68 cubic feet from Miami to Panama City is 730 for the actual ocean freight. The hazmat fee was 235. You gotta pay this for paint, chemicals, and even lithium batteries. 35 bucks was the documentation fee, but you can avoid this if you provide an itemized invoice for all the content. Transport surcharge was 50 bucks, and we paid zero for import taxes because Felipe Gracias. files it as boat in transit, which means the goods will be leaving the country, so they don't tax you. This massive pallet cost $1,050 to ship down here over about eight days. And the coolest part is not only did they hook us up with all this stuff, they're covering the shipping as well. And this is the moment when I realize I'm in over my head. But I guess it's kind of my MO. Dive in head first and figure it out later. I'm starting to wonder if this is even possible. If I think about it too much, I'll quit before I even start. But if I trick myself into just starting, I'll be forced to find a way. Ooh, so satisfying. At first, they were just gonna send all of us some bottom paint. But then, they wanted us to have all the matching epoxy primer too. Ooh, perfect fit, perfect width. And then it only made sense to send us some epoxy resin because we were in the middle of fiberglassing the bulkheads. I hope this isn't coming off like a total product placement advertisement. Because it is. Total Boat actually told me I didn't have to make a video, but come on, dude. If someone's gonna send me a whole pallet to a third world country, you bet I'm gonna make a video about it. I've already spent so much money that I don't even have on fixing these bulkheads. Any dollar I can save, thank you. And then they said they couldn't have us sailing around with dirty boats. So they threw in a bunch of stainless polish and all other sorts of polishes and stain removers and de-waxers. And these are bunny suits. You know I'm all about the PPE. And the brown things, scouring pads. We now have enough scouring pads to last the rest of my life. 
Here's two entire cases of paint roller kits with trays and brushes. I'm just shoving some more bunny suits inside them. Check out how perfectly this box fits. No wasted space, baby. The key to stuffing 68 cubic feet of oddly shaped items into a tiny sub-sub-combat car is you can't waste space, not one bit. And more bunny suits? So many bunny suits. So many pumps! Electric scissors! Awesome! <laughs> I'm gonna keep these close. Fiberglass, Biax. I was about to go buy a new roll because I just burned through my first one. Fixo. Oh, dude, it's epoxy thickened with Cavasil in tubes so I could shoot it out with a gun. <laughs> I've been using my hands. Caked on, spreading it down the corners to make fillets. This is the last of it. If I can fit this in the window, we can go home. Cheap mixing pots always crack. These thick ones are the shit. They also hold tools, work as mini trash cans, and you can even drink out of the small ones. You can't have enough of these. Oh, we so got it. You guys totally could have sent us more stuff. I'm the Tetris master. Look at how much more space we got. Almost forgot about the hatchback cover. They would have charged me a hundred bucks for that. Never leave a place messier when you depart the place than when you arrive to the place. Donde esta basura? Gracias. What a fine establishment. He even offered to help me load the car. Ooh. Last step, close door, open window, squeeze in that last little bit, and roll it on up. Literally, no room in here. Can't even see the side view mirror. I need to see the side view mirror up here. There we go. Safety first. We're riding really low, and it just started to rain. Soaked my camera like. You know how everybody uses that tiny little car on a map animation to show you that a road trip is happening? Well, I'm gonna give you a proper breakdown of Panama. I did spend a year there. To get back to the marina, we gotta go from Panama City all the way across the thin part of Panama to Sabanitas and then into the jungle. Panama is actually really wide, but the thin part of Panama is only two hours across from here to here. I've actually touched the Pacific Ocean, driven two hours across Panama, and then jumped in the Atlantic. It's the shortest land distance between two oceans. And that's probably why the Panama Canal is right next to that highway. All right, I might as well tell you everything I know about Panama. <laughs> west side of Panama, this is the east. The majority of what we did happened right here in the middle. This is the famous Linton Bay Marina. This is home base. It's where most of the videos happen. It's where we're fixing our boats. It's where we're up on the hard. This right here is Panama City. I spent 10 days in quarantine right here in the Sky Reef Apartments on the 49th floor. It's where I crashed the drone actually. This is the airport right here. Oh my God, look at that line. This is Playita Marina, where the huge parlay meetup happened. Tom knows how to sail, Jamie knows how to sail. Colleen's you see him look at me and not say anything, right? <laughs> you saw that, you guys saw that? <laughs> David's still got his training wheels on. This is the road you take to get from Panama City to Sabanitas. From Sabanitas, you can go across to Shelter Bay. All right, so we just docked this beast of a boat. Crew doesn't know, but I've never done that before. It was terrifying, but we made it. Or you can hang a right, go down a two lane jungle road for an hour and hit up Linton Bay. When you hear people talking about San Blast, they're sailing a day in this direction to the islands where there's hundreds of them. Kinda got some lunch. What? That's gotta be what? Seven, eight, nine kilos? And when they go to Bocas del Toro, it's all the way on the west side of Panama. There's a chance! All right, after the regatta, we're gonna go look for the drone. This is how we cross the Panama Canal with Parlay. 
hung out in this lake overnight, and then we continued on all the way across and ended on the Pacific side. And then we have to continue to tighten these lines on both sides so that we don't crash into one of the walls. Eventually, you're gonna see a splash in Linton, go all the way to Bocas, come back to Shelter Bay, and then back to Linton Bay, and then to San Blas before we head all the way home to Texas. There's a lot of cool footage coming up, so hit subscribe. Let's hurry up and get back to Linton Bay because we still have to unload this entire car. And then I have to move all my stuff off of Parlay. Hola because I'm headed home for a couple of weeks and they just might be splashing while I'm gone. Gracias. And then tonight is music night at the bar, which always turns into some kind of crazy party on somebody's boat. That should wrap up by three in the morning, which is exactly the time that I need to start heading back to Panama City so I can catch my flight at eight in the morning. We're in Sabanitas the halfway point, about an hour and 15 minutes from the marina, and also the closest point that you can get real groceries. Groceries? Like at El Rey. Groceries. Groceries? I paid my very first Panamanian police bribe right here in Sabanitas, at this intersection actually, but I swear she looked like a crossing guard. I just want to make sure I catch this bribe on video because I got pulled over by the cops and uh, she was like, it's a hundred bucks. And then she's like, 50 bucks. Give it to the little kid. I'm like, 50 bucks. I know the going rate for a bribe here is a 20. So I got the 20, I was like, por favor. She said, okay, 30. And I was like, no, 20, please. She's telling me to move up. She wants me to get out of the way. So she says, give it to the little kid. Ustedes something muchacho. That means little kid, right? Gracias. Uh -huh. So shady. They sent the lottery ticket lady over to make the trade. I don't know why I kept thanking her. She just extorted me. Panama has some of the deepest potholes and tallest speed bumps. They call them policia muertos. It means dead police. They're not too bad if you go slow, but most of them are unmarked, so... A speed bump that I missed. You gotta drive all the way into the other lane. Look at how bad that other side is. This is the kind of stuff that's cracked one of my rims. I just hit the worst pothole ever and got a flat. There's three cop stops, three checkpoints you gotta go through. I usually roll down all my windows, turn on all the lights, and they usually leave me alone. But sometimes they'll ask for your license and your passport and search your car and look under your spare tire and open your luggage. Mucha pintura para bote. That's what I'm gonna save. It's go time. Hola. He's pointing at the passenger seat and saying something is dangerous, but I just change the subject and tell him how much my paint weighs. 500 uh, kilograms. Ah, 500 kilograms. Sí. <laughs> Dale, gracias. Okay. Gracias. It always helps when you speak a little bit of a... Oh God, that's bottoming out, hitting the speed bump. I wasn't even going fast. What I was saying was, it always helps to speak a little bit of the local language. He was just messing with me, telling me I needed a bigger car. Gracias. We made it. I already hauled 1,100 pounds one time today, so I had to get some help. I don't know if y'all remember Luis. He's the guy that helped me when we first got here, like nine months ago. He helped me loosen shrouds and clean up the boat and get ready for the haul out and realignment. We're gonna sort out everything we got by color, by type. This is epoxy primer over there. This is the Spartan bottom paint. We'll line this up over. There. 
These are our high performance epoxy resin. So their resin is non-blushing. I'm eager to give it a try. I've been using West Systems and I've also used US Composites, but both of them blush which is kind of annoying because if you don't use peel ply, then you have to wash it down before you can do another layer. The non-blushing stuff, you can just glass on top of glass on top of glass with just a little bit of roughening up. Lewis is a boss, man, look at that. Four whole gallons of that bottom paint. And bottom paint's got a ton of copper in it, so it's actually a lot heavier than regular liquid. Thank you so much, Luis, gracias. Okay, adios. Oh my gosh, dude, a little bit of help. So nice to have a little bit of help. The going rate's about 40 bucks a day, so I threw them 10 bucks. That's two hours worth of work, but we knocked it out in 30 minutes. So this bar is Ray's bar. Ray is just gonna crush a steak for me. He makes this amazing Bernays? Bernays. Bernays sauce. I don't eat sauce with steak, ever, except for this steak. The steak, man, the sauce changes your life. I don't ever take it. That's my steak, baby. Man. Got a bear or what? Nah, dude, I gotta go to the airport. So you want a whiskey? <laughs> so one of the main reasons why I have to get out of this marina at night for a morning flight is because Gracias. they lock the gate sometime after seven and before nine. If you don't get out of there, your car is trapped until the morning, which means I'd miss my flight. I'm just moving the car out so I can go back to music night. Tom has been taking salsa lessons every single day for a week. Today is his recital. Tom is pretty good, dude. I am impressed. He's been practicing every day for a week. Colin makes fun of him every single night. I gotta go say my goodbyes because I'm gone for two weeks and you never know who's gonna be gone by the time I get back. What's up, buddy? Yeah! Hey. 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 How you doing? James, How you doing? sailing is in Garo. Here for <laughs> two more days. They're still doing it. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh, Tom. Look at Tom's hat. Look at that style. Ngaru, came to say goodbye. Later, buddy. Take care, bro. I'm headed to the airport. So I won't see you. Oh, really? Yeah. Tonight? You're hitting up San Blas? Yeah. You're going to be back to check out, though. In too. a week. Are you going to be back? I don't know. Well, but if not, I'll catch you in Florida. Yeah. All right, bro. Please, okay? come sailing. And podcast. Podcast in yeah. Florida. Yeah. And sail. Most of the time when I'm here, I'm wishing that I'm home with the family, but I always get a little sad when I leave this place. Bye, Epic. Bye, Parlay. Tiny little Kia Picanto. We put so much stuff inside you today. You did good. Hola. Si, que has? Si, 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 no. Mucho uh, resina. The pelo. Even the cop at the checkpoint noticed that I got a haircut. He was rubbing his head and like, oh, mm, pelo. And I was like, yeah, man. Mucho resina in mi pelo. Necesita cortar. That's not how they talk. I'm sorry. Back in Sabanitas. We're halfway but I'm so tired. So the public transportation in Panama are made up of these crazy looking buses with these huge smokestacks. And there's always a picture of somebody on the back of them. In this case, it's this little girl, Hakide Alice. Do you open your legs and open your arms at the same time? Or do you open your legs and clap your hands? And just like that, we're back at the hotel that we were staying at this morning. Subscribe. Oh my. Going home.